Hey, what's up, guys? It's Eric. I uh, just wanted to show you something I found called Controller Mate. Uh, it's, I think it's pretty cool. Basically, it lets you uh, turn your computer keyboard and mouse together into a MIDI controller that um, you can control what notes you play as well as uh, use the mouse to control the modulation wheel or you could use it to uh, control the velocity you can really do whatever you want but this is how i set it up so um let's say you got something like massive and this is what made me think of it uh, so you open that up and these uh there's no keyboard down here so like you can't it's hard to audition sounds if you don't have a midi controller so what i did is i set up this thing and this is all you'd have to do to activate it is basically turn controller mate on and then record uh arm your track and then it will work uh but i'll show you controller mate real quick before we get into that so you would just open this up and then you have to make this patch first but you only have to do that once and then you would hit record and there you go. You got, um, you know, your your keyboard doing that. And let me open this guy up so you can see what I'm talking about. This just comes with OS 10. This is not part of the program. This is, you go to System Preferences to show. I, I'm just pulling this up so you can see what I'm doing. So that's a chromatic scale starting at Z. And a chromatic scale starting a W. So you have two of those, and then the brackets um, are octaves, uh, and then the um, uh, semicolon and apostrophe. Transpose it uh, by uh, semitone every time you press them. If you hit the Q button, it just resets it to a C note thir C thirty six as the default note. Um, so okay, so from there, let's say you have like a string patch, um, and let's, let's record. Um, I have it set up so that. The mouse moving the mouse up and down changes the uh, mod wheel. Um, you can also change the velocity. So you got a piano. Starts at 127 by default. But if you hit the minus or equal key, it'll I have it in increments of I think seven. Um, it'll go down from like 127 and then down seven and then down seven more. Um, but you could also toggle it by hitting the one button, um, the one key up in the top left here. And now the mouse. will uh, control the velocity. And then you hit one again to um, turn that off. The two button, uh, if you go back to this, um, you know, I want to record it on this actually, so you can hear it. If you hit two, it just it just turns off the mouse. So now it's not controlling the modulation anymore. And you hit two again, toggles it back on. That's just because sometimes it's annoying to have that thing controlling the modulation all the time. I found out. I think that's all the buttons so i'll show you kind of a quick overview of how i set it up uh, so this is controller mate and i'm not going to go through a whole controller mate tutorial i mean because it's you know you gotta spend a little time to figure out exactly how it works but I'll just show you in case you're you know it's pretty intuitive once you get how all the buttons work and then if you just do that investigation and you're trying to figure out how to do something like this, this might help to just kind of go through and show you guys. Okay, so here's all the keys on the keyboard right here. These black things are the keys. Um, this is the first octave here. You see you got, um, this is C36 and then this is C48. And then it's like kind of how a piano. Uh, these are all the white keys down here. Here's all the black keys. Um, and basically, 
Now let me get this down here. Oh, let me uh make it so you can hear this. Let's put it on the synth up here. And those are the black keys. Okay, um, the way that I set it up is that each one of these is these channel one variable notes. So basically the it's triggered here. Um, and then the velocity is set here. And then the note value is set here. Um, and then I have the upper octave up here. So it starts at W and goes to O. And it's the same, same setup. Um, and just so you know, the reason these additions, these are just basically like extenders. Um, I could have had it so that, it, you know, it's just so there's less wires basically. So that's what's going on there. Cause here's the engine and coming out of the engine, it's got a hook up to each key and then, but for velocity and note value, but then I took the note value and the velocity value. This is where the note value and velocity value is being spit out from the engine. Um, kind of I just relay that up here to addition and it, there's no there's no addition going on it's just adding zero to it but it's just purely for cosmetic purposes of being able to not have so have so many wires coming up this way or going through the, the screen so here's the engine um, and what this is uh, this is the um, note engine and Basically, it starts off with a, and this is the properties here. Um, it starts off with a counter. Its initial value is 36. That's for the note C. And then, um, so that's that's where the note starts. So it's taking this 36, spinning out here, spinning into 36, and then the 36 goes to here, 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 and there's 36. And then for um, a half step up, we it's shooting the 36 out. And it comes down here and it adds it adds one right here and then it shoots the 37 down to this one and then so on and so forth so you know you got two three four five six seven and then up here you know 12 13 14 15 16 so that's how the notes are being added and the reason i started it up here is so that you can modify the start point of what that note is so you got your modifiers here's your Here's, here's your octave modifier. You got your brackets right here. Um, so, you know, every single time you hit um, the bracket, the right bracket, it goes up by 12. And the uh, left bracket goes down by 12. Uh, similarly, you have your um, apostrophe and semicolon. And see how it's adding, it's going, it's adding a half step. Um, or decrease in a half step. So that's shooting out to all the keys for like a kind of global command of like, hey, it's going up an octave or it's going down an octave. And then there's a reset button on these counters. So if you hit Q, uh, it resets. And I guess the other thing to point out about that is I set it so that it goes, and I played around with these numbers basically to make it work with how it's set up, having the initial value be 36, but Basically, the minimum value is negative 24, maximum value is 127. Depending on how you set yours up, it's probably going to be a little different. And then reset to the initial value is clicked. And so what that means is, if you see the octave, it keeps going up. Well, you don't want it to keep going up. Like, realistically, you want it to wrap back. So I set it up so that once it hits 127, it, wrap back, it wraps back to the initial value of 36. Similarly, with uh, going down the octave. And, you know, just play with what those numbers are so it makes sense to you where it's going to wrap back. Um, then it takes care of it for that engine. This is uh, like the mouse input, uh, which basically is going to two things, which is the uh, velocity, which is down here, and then the modulation. Um, and then, you know, since the velocity is, is uh, taken care of by the uh, minus and equal or uh, buttons um, th that that is connected to here as well as the mouse and then you've got these um, not counters what is it where's the selector at these selectors are are what's making that happen in terms of the switching 
Um, so, so starting with these keys for the velocity minus and equal, uh, those uh, are chosen by or by this one key. Uh, I mean, in the default position, this affects. You see, if I'm hitting, I'm hitting the minus and the equal button, and you see the velocity going up and down. Now, if I hit the one key, um, now when I move the mouse, it's going up and down. So, I'm, you know, I don't want to get too deep into this, but if you just kind of look at how this is set up, that'll kind of make sense. So you got a toggle key, and it goes to a selector, and so every time you hit this, it's toggling between going between this, the mouse input, or going between um, the uh so the see like here i toggle it and it's on that means it's that means i've toggled one on and now it's now the selector is responding to the mouse moving now i hit one again and it turns the toggle off and now it's responding to my plus and minus keys going through and that's sending it down to the velocity of each one of these keys um and so when i have it set up to the keys i also have another selector going on over here from the one key and that's turning basically the selector is saying hey uh is this going to go to modulation or is it going to go to velocity so when i have it set up so that the uh, minus and plus keys are changing this i also have this toggle going saying okay well when the minus and plus keys are doing this have the mouse control the uh, modulation which you can see here um, now that now that's going out to this modulation wheel um, and then I also have this other modifier the two keyboard so see how the modulation wheels picking this up but when I hit keyboard two turns this off and now it's not picking up anymore I hit two again it is picking it up huh, this is pretty I mean it's hard to explain but I, I mean I think you guys get the gist and if you just kind of look at what's going on here like pause the screen I'm sure you could figure out from there um you know if you were looking to set something up like this the toggle selection thing and then just you know i guess lastly i'll just go through uh what's going on here with the mouse um i have uh, basically two things going on and 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 really the numbers are right here and right here so one of them goes from one up to 127 the other one goes from zero up to 127 so the one that goes from 1 to 127 is being shot down to the velocity when that one's selected because you don't want it, when it goes to 0 it doesn't have make any noise so I figured that doesn't make any sense so I wanted to go 1 to 127 but for the for the modulation I want it to go from 0 to 127 so you have the full range of what a modulation wheel can do um, so that being said like for the modulation one I set up an accumulator and I had it so that it goes to negative 254, which is 127 times 2, because the modulation wheel goes from 0 to 127. So I said, okay, I want to be able to affect the speed of that. And so the reason I made it negative 254 is because uh, when you go up, the way this program is set up, it goes negative. But I'd rather have it go positive. So I, so you do that. You say, okay, it goes negative, but then you absolute value it, so it becomes positive. So now you got a value when you go from zero up to two fifty four, um, and then I divide it by two to get back to being going zero to one twenty seven. But the reason I did that was because, like, let's say I did times four divided by four, then it would be like it would take twice as long to to get from zero to 127. If I didn't have, if I just went in the accumulator one to 127, it'd be very fine value. So this is the way that you kind of like do the sensitivity, like when you're playing a video game and like aiming and you want to affect your sensitivity of your right stick. It's the same idea. It's what it's doing. I, I set it to be basically just the way this program works and everything. It worked out if I doubled the doubled it and then divided by two um, to get it back to the zero to one twenty seventh that that would be the best so that that's how that goes to here um, zero to one twenty seven right and then the other ones I wanted to get I wanted to get rid of going down to zero for velocity so it's the same idea but what I did was I did 
252, so it went 0 to 126. And then I added one after that. So that way, um, for, out of here, it's going, you see it goes, see this one right here, it goes 0 to 126. Well, then you add one, and it goes 1 to 127, and it never hits 0. So I know I didn't do exact explanation of how everything works, but you know that'll give you. I think if you just, um, you know, take, you know, freeze the screen and look at it, it you should be able to to figure it out from there. Um, I think I have everything spaced out enough so you can see how everything connects. All right. Well, hope this guy. I hope this helps you guys and uh, have a good one.